So I had a request from one of my subscribers to do a tutorial on the DMX monitor. So that's what today's tutorial will be about. Uh, just to give a look here, so I set up some generic dimmers, 10 of them. And then I have some Chauvet Hex 3s, um, 8 channels here. Intensity, red, green, blue, amber, white, ultraviolet, and a strobe channel. And then I put in two movers here, QWash 360s. These are set to 11 channel mode. Pan tilt, red, green, blue, white, uh, power color macro, dimmer, strobe, zoom, and control. Now, what I also did here just to make it faster to show you things is I did some channel groups. So my ellipse photos, I put in one group, my hex. Uh, lights, I did a, a group for the dimmer, a group for all the reds, all the greens, all the blues, all the ambers. And if you check out one of my tutorials about groups, you'll understand why this makes programming a little bit quicker for you. But uh, I did put some groups in, and you'll see that when I do the tutorial. So let's go over to the functions page now. So if I go over to functions, and this is your DMX monitor, I'm going to click on that, and it will basically bring this window up. So you can see my 10 generic dimmers. And right now it's showing you the DMX address. So this is DMX address 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. This light is DMX addresses 11 through 18. This light is uh, DMX addresses 21 through 28. This one is DMX addresses 31 through 38. This is DMX address 41 through 48. This is 51 through 61, and this one's 71 through 81. Now, if I click on relative channels, it's, it'll switch from showing me the DMX channels. It's just going to be showing me the channels in each light. So this lights, these lights each have one channel. They're numbered here, dimmer 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, but it just shows you one channel. Here is slim par hex 3 number 1, but notice it says channel 1 through 8. Uh, hex number two, channel one through eight. So that's the difference here. It's not actually showing me the DMX channels. It's just showing me the channels on that light or on that particular light. Same thing for my wash lights. It has 11 channels. So it's just showing me all the channels one through 11. If you want to see the DMX, actual DMX addresses of those channels, then you click on DMX channels. Um, also, when we're changing things in here, we can look at it as either being DMX values, which is 0 to 255, or percent values, which is 0 to 100. And as far as universes goes up here, uh, all these lights are in universe 1. So if I select universe 1, it will show these lights. If I were to select universe 2, then you won't see any lights because they don't have any lights assigned to universe 2, just universe 1. Or I can just click on all universes, and it will show you all your lights. So uh, let's bring up a scene here to get started. I'm going to click on New Scene. I'll just let it give it a title here, New Scene 2. And I'm going to select my lights. Um, let's start with the ellipsoidals here. So I'll click on them. Now I've instantly selected all 10 ellipsoidals, and you can see them across here. Uh, there is 1 through 10. But I can also look at this as groups. And that's why I did my group thing. Now if you watch my values here, I'm in DMX values. As I raise this, you'll see those going up in value. And if I go up to 100%, I'm at 255, and it actually shows you that here. It shows you 255 here, and it shows you here on the DMX monitor 255. If I set this to percent values, you're going to notice now that it's going to go from 0 to 100. And it does, it keeps the DMX value here. So this is still showing DMX value 255, but notice now up here in the DMX monitor, it's showing this as 100%. So if you prefer to work in percentages, like you just know you want your lights at 50%, it's a little bit easier you can to do it this way, and that's approximately DMX value 127 for that. Okay, so that's the difference there. I guess we'll leave them set at percent for the time being. So now let's take a look at you have your DMX view, which is what we're looking at here, and then they will provide you with a 2D view. The 2D view is like a grid view, and a lot of lighting software will give you that option to display a kind of a basic grid view. So it's not going to be a three-dimensional stage view. It's just going to be a, a 2D grid view, 
which is helpful because it at least it shows you what particular lights are on and active and possibly what colors that they're operating in. So, so let's take a look at that. If I click on 2D view, nothing comes up. Now, when this first comes up, it's going to start in the size 5 by 5 meters. If you want to be particular and, and actually make this the exact size of your stage, you can do that. Just be aware that sometimes what happens here is it brings up very, very small representations of your light. So what I prefer to do, I don't need this to be exactly the dimensions of my stage. I'm just going to pr uh, pick a dimension that's going to give me a good size of my light representation. The way that the lights are represented on this grid or the size of the lights is determined by the fixture definition file, which we have no control over here. And that's just a topic for another tutorial. So just realize we can't change that. But if you change the size of the stage, like I'm going to change this to 3x3, three three, it will make the fixtures look a little better. Now I'm going to click on plus to add fixtures. I'm going to click here, hold down shift and click here. So I'm going to add my first five dimmer lights here and click OK. Now they will appear up here in the corner. And because I have this selected, they will actually have a label on them. And if I go up here and hold this, you'll see that this uh, a little label pops up and says, this is dimmer number five. Click, drag it to the position where you want it to drop it at, and then just drop it. Now, one of the annoying things about this is, as soon as you do this, the size of this uh, square changes over here, and it brings up options over here. This is the exact positioning of this light in relationship to the grid. And then you can rotate it, although I don't know why you would want to rotate it because it's only a 2D representation here, but you can rotate it. So uh, let's go back up here. This is going to be dimmer number four, which in my setup is going to be here. Dimmer three. So these are my little ellipsoidal lights. These have one channel. They're just basically controlled by dimmers. Okay. Now, they're in place now. If I raise my channel here, you'll see these come on. They try to represent here the intensity of the light. So when I'm at 50%, it's kind of a grayish color. It doesn't go to bright white until I'm all the way up. Another feature that you have in the grid view here is you can actually give this kind of a gel color. So I can select this light and say, you know, I like this to be gel color pink. I'd like this one to have a gel color pink and so on. So I can change the gel, gel colors of all these to pink. Okay, so now as I select each light, you'll see that they're represented by the pink gel color. And now when I raise my dimmer channel here, they'll actually come up in this color. I find this to be very helpful because if you have a number of old-fashioned ellipsoidals on your stage that you're controlling, even if you don't have different color gels in them, I like to color code them. So I, I know like maybe my front of house lights are I'll give them one color like pink, and then my downstage lights will give them a different color and so on. When I'm looking at this grid representation, then I can quickly at a glance see you know, what lights are on. My front of house is on, my downstage, my midstage, my upstage, what's on, even though I may not actually have these colors of gels in there. A lot of times I just use the gel color to help me differentiate what lights are on. Now, if I click back in the grid here, that little helper or side menu disappears. Um, let's add in our other lights, and I'll do that right now. Now you notice that the ones we selected are gray out, so they're no longer selectable. You can't select those. So I'm going to select 6 through and hold down my shift key, 6 through 10, click OK. Again, it appears up here, and if I hover up there, this is dimmer 10. I'm going to drop that guy in there, and our window comes up again. I'm going to just quickly populate this. And after I get it populated, I'm going to change the gel color to amber. Okay, I've got everything populated. I changed the gel color here to amber. Um, now, I'm going to bring these down for a minute. I have all of these on one master dimmer here. So when I bring them up, you will see. Okay, and they do come up. Now, as I adjust my screen size here, the size of everything will change. And you can decide whether you want to keep the labels or not just by clicking up here. That'll get rid of my labels. So again, when I'm running things, I may have a smaller version of the screen running somewhere up in the corner, just big enough so I can see what my lights are doing. 
and let me take out the group channel and I can go to just dimmer number one here and turn on light one or go to dimmer number two turn on light two again remember there's a different view here where I can do uh, channel groups or all fixtures and then I can do dimmer one and I can do like dimmer two at a different and then maybe what's the I think this is five here I can do five whoops I'm sorry that's six I guess over there so again you can do some you know it's kind of helpful to see in a grid like what's actually happening and adjust the lights in some different ways okay so that makes sense so hopefully if you're familiar with this you can see what's going on all right now let's take a look at uh, some of the other lights like the uh, LED lights that have different colors in them. I'm going to do a different scene here. And actually I'm going to move these guys down a little bit. Okay, so I have my uh, pink ellipsoidals here, my amber ellipsoidals up here. I'm going to add in my LED lights. So I click plus here. That's going to be my slim par hexes. There's four of them. Again, I'll click, hold down shift, click here, say OK. They'll appear up here. Now notice these are much smaller a representation here. Again, that's determined by the fixture definition file. And the only way you can fix that is to go into the fixture definition file. So I don't know why it happens, but uh, whoever created this fixture definition file, they came out being really, really tiny. Okay, let's bring up a new scene. In this scene, I'm going to just use my hex lights. So I'm going to need the dimmer channel, the red channel, the green channel, the blue channel, the amber, the white, the ultraviolet, and then the strobe. So just my hex lights. Now if I click on groups, you can see where those all come up as a group here. So if I in increase my intensity and do red, you can see my four hex lights come on in red. Now, since these are LEDs, if I start to blend in my green, let me enlarge this a little bit so you can see it better, you can see they go to an orange color. If I keep going, it's going to go to yellow because red and green at full intensity is going to give you a yellow color. If I pull my green out, start adding in some blue, I'm going to go to that pinkish color if I bring this down. So it tries to show you approximately what color you're going to have. Now, QLC Plus is not going to show you what happens when you add your amber channel in here because this is not that sophisticated. Some lighting programs will add, try to add in the color of the amber and approximate what that color is going to look like. QLC Plus does not do that. So I'm adding in my amber channel. Now, it is actually adding that color into your lights on the stage but it's not showing us that in the grid view. Same thing if I move the white channel here, it's not going to have any effect in the grid view. It will have an effect on your lights on stage. And same thing UV. So keep in mind, the only thing that's going to get displayed in the grid view are the red, green, and blue channels. All right. If I were to bring all these channels up, then you will get basically white because you put red, green, and blue at full, you're going to get white. Uh, let me pull this back down and just can make a kind of a pinkish thing. The strobe channel will be visible, but it won't actually show you the strobe speed. So again, you'll have to look at what's going on on stage. This will just give you a general indication that there's some strobing going on. But notice that the speed of the strobe is not represented up here, no matter where I put this. Now certainly, your lights on stage are going to be strobing at different values according to the way I have this set. But in the grid view, it's just going to give you a general representation that there's some flashing, there's some strobing going on there. Okay? All right, let's go to one more scene, and we're going to add in our moving lights. So at this point, I'm going to bring my QWash 360s in, highlight those two, say OK. I'm going to bring those down here, like to the front of the stage somewhat. And we'll go back to this. And let's do a scene with our Q Watch 360s. I'll add a new scene here. Um, same thing here. I'm going to do uh, my, I need my pan channel, my tilt channel, my dimmer channel, uh, red, green, blue. And we'll add the white in. Again, it's not going to show anything in the grid here. So I can go to my channels groups now. 
Now you notice on any lights that have plan, pan and tilt, they will have this kind of a purplish and a blue line going around here. The purplish is indicating the pan of the light, so the way that the light spins. And you'll see that purple changing as I move my pan control. See it move around from one side to the next. So it's just a little indication, again, we're not in three dimensional, but it's a little indication that your pan is moving. So this is like about halfway through pan, and this is all the way. Again, how far the light will pan depends upon the fixture definition file. Then your tilt is going to be represented by the blue line. So right now the light is tilted in the up position. Now, right now it's probably pointed down at the stage, and now it's tilting up to the other side. So that's represented by the blue line, the tilting. The rest of this just looks like we did with the hexes. So if we can light this up, we get red, we get orange, we get yellow, depending upon how we blend things in. Again, the white channel is not going to have any effect on the grid view. It will actually look differently uh, to your lights on stage, but this grid view is not that sophisticated, so it's not going to incorporate the white channel into the grid view. And then the same thing as we did with the hexes, if I add the strobe channel in, it will just generally show you that it's flashing. It's not going to show you the rate of strobe that's uh, happening up there. So, Okay. All right. So hopefully you'll find this helpful. I do like this. Um, I don't typically run a 3D a visualization program when I'm actually doing a show, but I like to have some, something like this up and running up in the corner of my screen. I'll make it a lot smaller and put it up there, depending upon what size stage I'm working with. So at a glance, I can kind of look around and see what my lights are doing uh, really quickly so I can see if there's something that's not quite doing what I expect it to do.